Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. Gratia, scientia, make them suffer. Morning, Morning, Ma'am, I think if we're going to do anything about the operation in the car, do you smell that? It smells like. My people, my people, comments and friends, welcome to another... Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Oops. Oh, I was told on Twitter not to do that. My people, my people, comments and friends, welcome to another episode of The Week With Me, Comrade Fatso. And it's been an interesting week. ED is still gallivanting during this Omicron wave. The NDC Alliance spokesperson, Fadzai Mahere, gave some sound advice to law interns. And then there was Tinashe, Tinashe, Tinashe. But first, there was avocado, avocado, avocado. As Avoget Mahere, no, 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 sorry. As Avocado Mahere, no, sorry. Uh, Advocate Mahere found herself having to defend her interns shall not live by bread alone gospel on Twitter. Mahere tweeted, Dear law interns, you know I'm in your corner. Don't walk into the firm at 8 a.m. holding a loaf of bread in one hand and an avocado in the other, pushing at the door against the senior partner with no greeting. Master professional etiquette. Curate your corporate image. Yeah, you just been schooled. Her tweet on office etiquette hit a couple of thou shalt not dis avocado nerves with Zimbos going wild. One Zimbo tweeted, Advocate might look okay, but deep down, while Mahere was breaking the internet with avocados, there arrived Tinashe Tinashe Tinashe. The Rukambe family WhatsApp group went viral this week as one Sekuru Tinashe dropped a photo which left nothing to the imagination. Tinashe Tinashe Chicha Waita Chicha Orguita Tinashe Tinashe Tinashe. What are you doing, Tinashe? Tinashe, Chicha. And let's just say that Sekuru Christopher wasn't exactly amused. Ah, huh? someone should tell Kule Chris that he was sending a voice note, not a phone call. While every Twimbo's attention was focused on avocados and tinashes, the hurment continued to clamp down on society. Firstly, clamping down on teachers as Nyaya the beg, beg, beg caused problems, with the Hurment labeling teachers as a new terrorist group. The Hurment, which gave war vets a pay rise in Mayusa, has called out teachers for asking for a pay rise, saying they're working in cahoots with the UK to bring about regime change. A Harare lawyer has brought a lawsuit against the Law Society of Zimbabwe that could see it lose its authority as the sole body regulating the legal profession. This is after Justice Minister Ziambi Squared threatened to go after the Law Society, fuming they have converted themselves into an activist lobby group. They no longer know why they exist. They have lost their bearings. Thirdly, the Hurmen continued to go after civil society as Parliament showed that it wanted to fast track the PVO bill into law by holding public hearings in December. 
December area man. Mm, during Xmas. The PVO bill would allow the Hurment to deregister NGOs, fire their boards, and even put their own employees. Just because. If the PVO bill becomes law, the Hurment could literally take over Magamba and the weak, and it would be like. Welcome to the Patriotic Week with me, Combrit Basi Rinojka. In other news, we're taking over, taking over. So comrades, while we laugh at the avocados and the tinashes of this world, let's also stay woke to what the Hurment is up to. This week, we caught up with Janet Jo, the trailblazing director of the Zimbabwe Coalition on Debt and Development, for an exclusive interview. Ndafa! Nero! Come on! I need to shoot the I need to shoot the shaman. Papi, I need to shoot the shaman. Papi, I need to shoot the shaman. Papi, I need to shoot the I'm <laughs> 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 Hey, <laughs> 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 Comrades and friends, welcome to a very special interview. Today we are joined by the director of the Zimbabwe Coalition on Debt and Development, Zimcod, Comrade Janet Jo. Comrade, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, so Janet, you guys, I mean, you, you know, you work, you do really great work on economic justice issues. Um, but something I think that's very much in the public imagination at the moment mm -hmm. is the How Far campaign. Yes, okay, you did this yes. super, super creative How Far campaign. Yes. You guys plastered it all over billboards across the country. You did a mixtape, Nima Zim Dancehall Artists. And you asked a lot of like really important accountability questions to the Hurment. Yes. Uh, so what, what were some of the big questions you were asking and wh what do you actually think you guys have achieved? Thank you very much for that question. Um, the How Far campaign is an accountability uh, campaign. And um, when we conceptualized it, the idea was to make it big and connect with the citizens, uh, make accountability issues as simple as possible make public finance management issues as simple as possible, mm -hmm. show the cost of accountability, of lack of accountability, um, if we do not hold accountable the citizens. Mm -hmm. So it was twofold in terms of raising public awareness on accountability, but also holding the government accountable uh, itself. Mm -hmm. And we were asking different questions to do with corruption, uh, to do with the Auditor General's reports, to do with public service delivery, to do with uh, implementation of some of the findings of the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. um, we also asked accountability questions on government projects uh, that have been going on and dragging forever that have not been done, be it roads, be mm. it provision of water, um, quite significant questions at the community level, at the citizens level. 
And with it, we saw citizens as well taking up many accountability questions that they started asking. Mm -hmm. We had citizens starting to ask about by-elections, for example, mm -hmm. and the cost of that they attached to not holding by-elections was that. So who is playing the oversight role on public finance, as an example? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it connected governance issues, civil and political issues, to economic governance issues. Mm -hmm. And we saw the citizens take that up. And for us, that was the biggest um, achievement of getting that traction, getting that simplicity for the citizens to understand accountability from where they are sitting. Mm -hmm. Gender, we saw, you know, women's groups, youths, coming up with their own questions because yeah. they started linking, you know, gender-based violence as an example to economic, the economic crisis, to the political crisis, to the lack of political will to deal with these issues. So that for us was such a big achievement. Mm -hmm. But um, one of them, we also saw the SOFA <laughs> campaign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zanuki <laughs> so, responded to you guys. Zanuki has responded. So far, so good. Yes, yeah. but we, what we were looking for was not the response from Zanuki. Mm. But for us, that was an expose of the conflation of state and ruling party issues. Yeah. We, we were not looking for answers from Sheikh Sheikh building. Yeah. We wanted answers from the executive government, you know, the separation of powers. We wanted government to respond based on government policy and commitments, mm -hmm. what they promised to the citizens. Mm -hmm. But all the same, so far was okay. It mm. allowed the campaign to continue and to go. Mm -hmm. And um, we hope that we've built a culture the idea was to build a culture. I think we were talking uh, off stage that is it an event? Um, you know, campaigns come and go, they mm. bubble gum and they go. We mm. are hoping and working so that this is not a bubble gum campaign. Um, it has uh, deposited something in the, in the citizens that they will continue to hold accountable and mm. it becomes a culture. And hopefully the government itself becomes comfortable in being hold, held accountable and mm. they start responding to the questions. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so maybe one of the big successes of, uh, of the How Far campaign was that uh, some of your billboards got vandalized. I mean, yes. so who do you, oh, yeah, who do you think who do you think vandalized your billboards? Do you think that Nick Mangwana like woke up at two a.m. one morning, put on a balaclava, and just did the things? I wish I knew. Mm. I wish I knew. But and that's a success story I, for you guys. Yes, <laughs> the, the, it, it it showed that it it struck some nerve. Mm. Um, and whoever was doing it, I'm not too sure. I can't really say he did it mm. or who did it. Mm. But whoever vandalized them was not comfortable being asked those questions. Mm, mm. So, which means that it struck a chord, it struck a nerve somewhere that the citizens are watching and they want to take away the, you know, the, the, the discussion, the debate, the being held accountable. Um, and that was a huge success for us. We had the drugs. I think that was one of the billboards um, all around of the nine billboards that were vandalized and mm. banned. Those that had to do with corruption mm. were the most that were taken down, which means we really have an issue. It also shows us where we have a problem, that there's someone who doesn't want to be held accountable when it comes to the corruption issues, dealing with the high profile corruption cases that mm. have been reported. It showed us that we are not yet comfortable to deal with that. So the culture of impunity continues mm. and we need a response at the highest level in terms of who is doing this and the citizens want to know. So we put the billboards back mm. um, because that's, that question hasn't been answered. We haven't seen the arrest. We haven't seen the prosecution. We haven't seen the recovery of the assets that have been looted. Mm. So that question will still remain. I mm -hmm. think that's, that is what I, I would say. Someone is not comfortable being as the corruption cases. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to ask you a hypothetical question. Yes. Uh, you and Mtuli Nube are flying back from Switzerland on an Air Zimbabwe flight. And you arrive <laughs> and all of, a sudden, Switzerland. all of a sudden there's a new SI that's been announced, <laughs> COVID, Chi Chi Chi, the Omicron variant. And you guys are locked up together in quarantine at Mgoni Lodge. And you are stuck there for uh, 10 days. So you and Mtuli are sitting there. What would you say to Mtuli? I don't know how we survive that <laughs> lockdown with, with, with Professor Mtuli, but um, I think I would say, look where we are and how we have been allocating resources to deal with the pandemic. I think that would be my first question. How much did you allocate uh, for post-COVID recovery or for us to be able to respond to COVID. And when I'm referring to his budget, do you know one of his assumptions was that COVID-19 is going to rescind? And I said, how? How does it rescind? We're getting into the fourth world. The whole mm. world is grappling. 
and you are making a 2022 whole national budget on an assumption that COVID-19 is going to rescind. Mm. Look where we are. You should have yeah. allocated more resources. Yeah. Do you see that the budget is based on wrong assumptions? That projection of growth 5.5 is not true because the assumption, one of your assumptions have just been, you know, battered right here. We are in isolation. Yeah. So I think the issue of resources for me mm -hmm. will be a big issue. Uh, I will talk to him about um, resources in line with reducing extreme poverty, which I did not see in the national budget. I will mm. talk to him about reducing inequalities. The rich in Zimbabwe are getting richer. And unfortunately, it is those that are po the political elite, the politically exposed or connected persons. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to him about unemployment and how the budget was supposed to deal with the informal sector, the youth, the women, you know, vulnerable groups that are suffering, that have suffered the pandemic. Yeah. So when we're talking about the pandemic, we always, when it started, we were saying that if you have underlying conditions, you are in trouble mm. when it comes to COVID-19. And I think it is the same with the economy. If the economy had underlying conditions or has underlying conditions, then it is in trouble. And you know how we were responding at a personal level to COVID-19? We were saying, what are our homegrown herbs? Natira, Fukira, yeah, yeah, yeah. do this. So I would ask him, why don't we think about homegrown people-based, you know, policies to respond because we have underlying issues and we haven't seen that. Mm -hmm. And because we haven't seen that, we are in trouble. Just like someone with underlying conditions is in trouble if they get COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we have seen that at the government level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so in, in my final question to you, uh, yes. Janet, yes. Uh, we're going to do multiple choice, okay? Yes. Now, multiple choice, you remember this from school, ah, easy going, I yeah? I hated it. it. <laughs> easy going, it's either or. So you tell me in this, you say either or, or. Okay, or, do I give or, you an explanation or I just? Ah, no, no explanation needed. Okay. You can say either or or neither. Okay. All right? All right. Okay. So firstly, your first multiple choice question, uh, trickle down economics or pro poor economics? Proper economics. It's unfortunate you made me sit this side. Mm. I sit on the left all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm unapologetic about sitting on the left. Mm -hmm. So I would never choose trickle down mm -hmm. because wealth does not trickle down. Wealth, its characteristics, it kind of stays with accumulates. the good <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It accumulates. It never trickles down. So I don't see the logic in that. Mm -hmm. So I would go with proper. Okay. Yes. Your next multiple choice question. Sadza ni lacto or cabbage ni matiemba? Very serious question, comrade. Your, your, your life depends on the answer to this. Ah, totori mama vij. The, the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution, <laughs> I think. Because um, I think we have such a very small livestock head in Zimbabwe. Lacto may actually be difficult for us to get. We have to, to, to import it somehow. So. Angatiri mami veg. Cabbage. Okay. Cabbage. Your final multiple <laughs> choice. John Mangujga or Joseph Chinotimba? I can pick Joseph Chinotimba anytime. Mm. I can pick him anytime. I think he represents Buera, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see is Buera, guys. I think you like, him, yeah. you like him because you like comedians. No, because you know, I like comedians. comedians. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I, 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 I would struggle um, with, with, with John Mangonjka. I think generally when we're talking about transparency and accountability, one of the biggest culprits mm. is the central bank. Yeah. It's the central bank, to the monetary policy, talk about the foreign auction system, talk mm. about our debt, domestic debt, hidden debts, debt mm. assumptions. The national budget is also talking about um, Arabic debt assumption. Did you see whatever the losses of 2009 in the exchange without an audit? So mm. it has contributed to most of the problems that we have is the monetary policy. So I would struggle to choose him. Mm. I, would choose, I would choose Joseph. I think... Um, yeah, at the community level, I would, I would go with, with him. And of course, he's, he's, he's a comic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay, so you'll go with Joseph. Well, no, yeah. thanks, comrade. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thank you. This and was Janet, so much fun. please, uh, yeah, keep, you know, keep doing that amazing work. Thank keep you. asking the questions. Thank you. Keep putting up those billboards, even yes. if comrades they seem to be taking them you. down. Thank you. We've done quite a lot as well with Open Pali, with Magamba, around this half hour campaign. I think you've profiled it at, at, at a very high level as well on the digital spaces. And I really, truly value that partnership as well. It has brought so many uh, stakeholders, especially the youth, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. You know, they found a space to connect, you know, to multiply this whole message. And thank yeah. you very much for that. I ah, really no. appreciate it. One time. One time. Thank, thank you, comrade. Cool. And food sec. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with the PVO bill so that you can attend public hearings or lobby your local MP, then follow ZLHR on Twitter for updates and analysis. Let's fight this bill. Thanks for joining us on the week. Follow Magamba TV on social media. I've been Comrade Fatso. You have been the people. This has been the week. Thank you. Tinashe, 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 and Futsek. <laughs>